Yeah, I was looking for the prophecy that God said earlier about that there would be removals of uh, leaders, that some would step down, some would be removed, some would be die. You remember that prophecy? Yes. I don't remember where that one's at, but you do. All right, so let's go on to the next one as you look at that. Slide, slide two. He does a great job, by the way. That's great. Slide two. March 13th of 2022. Therefore, do not be moved by heat as it fills the earth. And as it, as it heats in the natural, things will be heated by the power of my hand. So as you look at the heat, it'd be easy to complain. And God's saying, look, you think it's hot. My hand is hotter. Why is my hand hotter? Because I like what God says. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to cool the earth. I'm going to cool the earth. God asked me a question recently. He said, do you believe that I can silence the earth? Do you believe I can quiet the earth? He said, do you believe I can cool it? He's talking about, now some people would say, well, physically, well, I think you're going to see physical manifestations, but can God cool things down? Yes. You bet yes. he is, and that's what he's doing. He said, you will know uh, I can cool the earth to, to still the earth, which is why the hands will shake and tyrants will be restrained. So the heat and the cooling is a sign of tyrannies being restricted. Yeah. So yeah. that's great. I don't think it's supposed that. to be hands. I think it's supposed to be land will shake. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I found that prophecy about All right. the... Yeah, which one did you find? It was from October 24th, 2021. Okay. Which is, what is uh, slide 22. Okay. Go to that one real quick about... And talk about that, please. Yeah. So I'll just read this really quick. But it says, uh, For do you remember the days when I sent my prophets... My servants, even my angelic host to move among the kings of the earth. Once again, as, as the God who sets up kings and takes them down, so I shall. And there is not only a global flood of my glory that shall cause it to be as in the days when the prophets stood and declared in the days that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord high and lifted, high, lifted up. Notice there is a removal of a king and a release of my glory. And so pay attention to the nations... Pay attention to this nation, for there is a realigning of governmental kings and rulers of nations. And it's going to happen in this one, too. And going back to what you said at the beginning, Pastor, look what it says in this prophecy. There will yeah. be many surprising, shocking things that will take place in this season that you are entering into because I have declared in my glory where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. Wow, we just talked awesome. about extreme, shocking things. So, um, okay, let's go to the next slide. This one is May 15th, talking about heat. And God says, as there will be great heat in the earth, record temperatures will continue to arise, yet I will do the opposite. And I think it's very important uh, that you look at the part opposite. And God says, I'll begin to cool things down that I may bring a swift change, a release to the, relief to the harsh seasons, because God says, the elitists, <laughs> I like this part, so they call themselves, and I laugh that they think that it is about their reset. Nay, it is my reset, <laughs> says the living God. And That's now awesome. show the next slide because he talked about I'll even do the opposite. So here's what we're currently having right now as of July 25th. After a sizzling weekend, heat in the Pacific Northwest, they're having 30 degree higher temperatures, record temperatures. While the Northeast is expected to see relief, they're having a cool front coming through. Notice how we use CNN because I want to show that even the enemies of God have to report what God wants. Yes, they do. I love that. I noted that. That's, That's great. That's good. By the way, he's got some really crazy socks on again. Does your wife know you're wearing those? She okay. She, she, she helps buy them. She Brenda, probably bought them. That's what I was going to say. Brenda would never buy socks like that for no, me. No. She knows I'm plain. Yeah, all he's right. plain. So anyway, all right, let's go to the next one. So now uh, let's talk about rain and drought. Um, you know, it's interesting, you don't often think of rain and drought coming at the same time, do you? It's either one or the other. Either you have rain or you have drought. God said you'd have rain and you would also have drought. Right. And so let's look at March 13th, 2022. And this, this, this prophecy is really interesting because there's a lot of clues in here as I was going through it today. Um, it says, let the displays, if they could put that up there. Thank you, guys. You're doing great. The hand of justice of God himself to be made manifest now in the earth. Oh, I liked it. God, the God of justice. 
that as the sound of justice arises in the earth, let the earth behold, watch this, crumbling of what? Walls. Walls. What do we just see crumble? They're calling it the guidestone walls. (laughs) Yeah. The breaking forth of a dam. How many heard about the explosion they had out of the Hoover Dam, which there was no breaking forth, thank God. I think that's God's mercy. But after this prophecy happened, there were three dams that broke two or three weeks later in Michigan. In Michigan and and China. The big one that happened in China. Huge dams. Huge one. How many people were affected? Like, I mean... Well, it was all, pretty much all of southwestern China. Yeah. Uh, essentially underwater. Is that That's where they insane. had the flooding? The Wuhan virus and all that over in there? Is that, over in, <laughs> is that in South Park too or no? We'll have to look at that. we have to look at that. Okay. All right. Breaking forth of the dam, the rising of the waters and of the tides too, but yet a shakings of hand for peace where there has been battle. That is very interesting. So God's kind of giving us a sequence of things that are happening. Now, I will say this. Rising of the waters and of the tides too. I heard the Lord specifically say to me, and I haven't uh, gone into this. He prophesied it on Sunday that we are to pray against August storms. Yes. Okay. Very important. I feel it. I feel it very strong. And I specifically feel like, you know, one of the weeks that keeps, keeps, you know, being shown to me was kind of like the last week of August heading into the first part of September is very, very important for our country. I don't know why. I sense it. And, uh, and so we are praying against any rising of waters, any demonic storms or natural storms. We really need to cover, come on, prayer warriors, yes. the month of August. Okay? Amen. Would you do that? Absolutely. And then watch this next part. Rain, rain, rain. Why such rain and he's saying at the same time drought these seem backwards they seem to contradict so god is talking about this now i want us to go to the slide real quick about the rain and about the drought is there is there one on this one or not there's not a news i thought there was a newspaper article on this one well one thing we'll show a slide eight let's let's uh show slide eight is it the record rainfall slide eight? Is that the one? Yeah, how many have okay. heard about the seven inches of rain that happened in St. Louis? Now, yeah. this is significant. God's saying, <laughs> rain, rain, rain. Notice the very place that it rained, and they said, they called it, we have a news headline. Do they have that? Yeah, they called it a one, one in a thousand year rain event. Floods in St. Louis. So, Scientifically, what that means when it says a, a one in 1,000 year flood means uh, a flood that magnitude has a one in 1,000 chance of occurring in any given year. That's crazy. So in terms of probability, the 1,000 year flood has a 0.1% chance of ever That's happening crazy. in any given year. Oh, wow. And this is happening right now in St. Louis. Okay, but why St. Louis? Have you ever thought about St. Louis? Yep. It's what? The arch, yes. The arch. Mm-hmm. You got it. Now, think about this. What, what is, this is always fascinating to me. I'm always like, God, you know, have you ever read Deut- Deuteronomy 28? And there's like, what, 12 scriptures of bless me? Was there like 64 or something like of, of, of <laughs> verses? I don't know. How many other? John, do you know that? How many other? I have no clue. But I know that there's a lot. There's, there's a total lot. And, and so when you get from the blessing to the curse part, one of the things that God says that marks the blessing is rain. That's why you can look at Acts 14, and it says in verse, I think it's 17, that God would send us heavenly rains that would mark fruitful seasons. So heavenly rains, fruitful seasons, Acts 14, 17, why? Filling our mouths with joy and laughter. The rain is a sign. Of an open heaven. Yes. This is extremely important that you get this. It's a sign of an open heaven. And think about it. In the very place where you would want a prophetic sign of an open heaven. In the gateway city. To showing that something has opened up. Yes. That's going to affect the nation. Yes, Lord. And when you get to the curse part of Deuteronomy 28, it says, hey. One of the signs that you're under a curse is the heavens will be shut up and there'll be no rain. Yes. 
Now I want to draw attention to April 26th, slide six uh, for us back there. Thank you. Let's give them a hand clap. They're doing a great job. Nice All right. Day out. Um, April 26th, God says something about rain. And here's something you have to understand. If God speaks a certain thing in a particular year, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's subject to that year. Right. Unless he specifically says so. Right. So he says, do you hear the sound of the rain? The rain that shall fall upon the earth and upon this nation. Watch the rain as it shall continually bring cleansing, which is the work of my hands. Then he goes on and he says, Therefore I speak and I say, as in the days of Noah when they were shut in and the rain fell and the floods came, this is what I bring in a new way. I bring the rain of my presence, which will be the flood of my glory. Now let's go to the next slide. This one's really interesting. Now, this was March 14th, 2021. Now watch your skies. Did you hear what I said to you, says the Lord? Notice abundance. There shall be an abundance of rain across the earth. Well, they sure had that in St. Louis. <laughs> but across this nation, and there'll be record uh, rainfalls, and water shall fall, and the rains will pour down. You say, why will this happen? Because I shall speak. And there will be a sound of thunder and no rain. And then there will be sounds of thunder and then the abundance of rain. Why? 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 Look at St. Louis. Gateway. Something is opened. A portal. Because God says, I want to show you, United States, that this nation is not closed to my ear. For there have been wrong reports that I did not listen to the prayers of those who prayed. I will show you the heavens are open and the abundance of rain shall be a sign. And this is in so many places. I'll, yeah. Our son John no. had called yesterday, John, and said, Mom, and, you know, FaceTime. I'm like, why do you FaceTime me when it's in the middle of the night? But anyway. <laughs> and um, I'm sleeping. Jonathan, I'm telling John, you. John, I know you're watching. And I'm laying on the bed, you know, no makeup is horrendous, and he has to FaceTime. But he said, you need to look out my window. He said, out there, there's a parking lot. He said, it's just this it tremendous, it was a river. Oh and he gosh. said, I have never seen anything like this in my life. It's he only going to increase. It's just a river of water and the lightning, he said, was just astonishing, you know. And it's not like, you know, the kid was born yesterday. He's seen some lightning. He's seen rain. But he said, this was astonishing. It was absolutely unusual. I've never seen anything like it. And I think people mm -hmm. are reporting that all around that just these deluges yeah. Yeah. of rain suddenly out of nowhere. So it is really He has seen a assignment. lot of lightning in his life, especially when he'd go for the refrigerator and I'd be like a flash of lightning. I'd block the door and say, you cannot have that food, son. <laughs> so, anyway, right? Flash of You all get that. All right. So let, let's do this. All right. Let's talk about Roe versus Wade. And I want to show you a prophecy. John, I know you're watching. Let's see if he's going to text me or something. All right, now, here's the thing. This one is, is so intriguing to me. And I, and I want to tell you something that the Lord said to me when I was on Flashpoint. Now, Pastor Gene, if you're watching me, you didn't call on me for a long time. <laughs> and I was just sitting there with nothing to do. <laughs> so, but, but God spoke to me. And so it was okay that you didn't talk to me. Gene? <laughs> okay, anyway. So... So let's go to slide 10. This is Roe versus Wade. And this one's really interesting because this is from 2005. Now, I just want to say this, and those of you that are listening and watching. So in 2004 was really the first indication, but really we went back and found one in 2000. 2000. Where God, and we might share that one in 2000, that it, 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 it's like you almost feel like God is prophesying about this season. That's what's so crazy about it. And he talks about the overturning of abortion. You remember that? Mm -hmm. yes, he does. In 2000. So here, here's what's amazing. So in 2004, God speaks about he's going to raise up in America. In America, He's going to give us judges of three they are going to be pro-life. That are going to turn this nation around. Okay. How many remember the prophecies that God prophesied ahead of time? There's going to be rulings. 6-3. Um, uh, seven, two, eight, one, and nine, oh, God said all of this. And we saw this with the Supreme court. Yes. So we're in that season and it's only going to get better. I'm telling you it is now watch this. 
So this is 2005. And let me just lay this out to you, and I'm going to tell you what God said to me when I was on Flashpoint. So the judges of the land, five to four, and so it was that they threw out abortion. Okay, now that happened in, uh, was that in the Nebraska one in June? Keep in mind, they, they overruled 5-4. So God's wanting us to pay attention to 5-4. You follow me? Then he says, do you not know that I gave you a sign? Go back to the 2000 election. Now stop there. It was in 1999. I caught a lot of heat from a lot of people. Now thank God social media wasn't there um, at that time because I had a visitation of the Lord on the 23rd, August 23rd, Matt's birthday. I had a visitation of the Lord uh, about Y2K and God said, tell the people it will not be as they say. And uh, so I came up with a message called what in hell is Y2K? And how many were here? And you are all scared. I even flickered the lights that night that we met, you know. And I even, you know what I did on Y2K? I went on an airplane. I was the only one, and another guy went to a football game. We went to watch Nebraska play uh, in the Fiesta Bowl down in Arizona. We were the only two on the plane. That, uh, are they stewardess or flight attendants? They're like, why are you doing this? I'm like, well, do you think you're really going to go down? Well, I don't mean, you know, I, I, and they were scared. And I said, it's not going down, first of all, because I'm on it. Second of all, <laughs> it isn't going to go down at all because God says, what in hell is Y2K? And the co-pilot comes out and he's like, really, you don't, you don't believe in it? I said, no, God's saying it's not going to be as they say. And I, we caught a lot of heat. Yes, we did. A lot of heat. And, and, and people and were really, like, Y2K Thank God was, the internet was not there. It's or true. It would have been all over all the new the, the Every, magazines and everything. But really, the but, Y2K was a but, plot from the pit of hell but it was. that absolutely Be, distracted the church. Because the Lord said the enemy was trying to cross the new millennial line ahead of his church to bring fear on the nation and terror. Mm -hmm. What happened shortly after that? You had Columbine. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. you had 9-11. That's true. So, you know, you can see where all of this, where it was going. But... But the point is, in, in, in 1999 also was the year, no, it was two, when was it with the election? God gave me a, um, a word that the election would be delayed. How many remember that? Yeah, you that were in our church. Recount, you remember that. Recount. And that yeah. I had a word that this thing was going to go past, that we would never see anything like this. It was going to go past the, the night of the election. And that um, I had a vision and I saw where an evil hand was trying to raise up uh, El Gore. And I saw the Lord go around it three times. This is all documented. Three times. And, and, and that's the three recounts. And then God struck it down. And it went to the Supreme Court. And I saw this and I began to tell people, we are going to, it's going to go past the election. We're, we're in, and, and there's going to be an attempt to raise up Gore, but God's going to strike it down. And, and there's going to be a five to four decision that's going to come to the Supreme Court. So this is what God's talking about. The five four decision. Notice the one he talks about early to throw out abortion. Now he's talking about the 2000 election. Was a ruling of what? Yeah, five, five, four. four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he says, did I not rule for the righteous uh, one seated five to four or for righteousness five to four? It was signs to ancient spirits and to your nation that this time there will be a vote in favor of saving the innocent. It was a sign that this time they will rule five to four in the way of righteousness. What was the Supreme Court ruling? Yes. Five to four. And people say, no, it's six three. Six three was to old, uh, uphold the uh, Mississippi. Mississippi yep. But it was five four, just like this prophecy says. Now, why is this important? So I'm sitting on Flashpoint, being ignored, <laughs> and I hear the Lord say to me very clearly, he says, he says, Hank, what has been shall be again. And I knew he was quoting Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. Then he quotes me again, Ecclesiastes 3. I seek what pass, has passed by. In other words, Ecclesiastes 3.15 says that God seeks what's passed by or history will repeat itself is another translation of Ecclesiastes 3.15. And then he says, and then he says, remember, the first shall be last. Now watch this. The first shall be last. And the last, reverse the order, shall be first. What has been, you're going to see it again. And sometimes what you've seen being again will be in reverse order. How many got that? Yes. How many yes, got that? Yes, got it. Just like you can take Genesis 1, the earth started off with a flood. 
The whole earth is covered with, with water. It's without form, void, darkness. And you can go all the way to Genesis 6, and then you see it again with the flood of Noah. And, but if you take the flood of Noah as the starting point and go back, you end up in Genesis 1, 2. You follow yes. me? Yes, is there, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So why is that important? All right. When Roe versus Wade was um, ruled upon, what preceded that? Prayer in schools were being taken out. Then they voted on Roe versus Wade, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to now. They ruled on Roe versus uh, Wade and they overturned it. And then what was the next thing they started ruling about? Whether a, 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 a coach could pray or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Interesting order. Now, why is that? Why is that order? Why? Why are we dealing with some of the Supreme Court rulings of prayer in school again, and Roe versus Wade? Because what has been shall be again, and it shall be in reverse order. All right. Now, listen to me. Go back to what God said. I gave you a sign in 2000. Okay. What happened in 2000? We were fighting. And debating on who the legitimate president was and should be. And God brought a five to four decision by the ruling of the Supreme Court that turned the whole thing around. Mm -hmm. We just saw Roe versus Wade. What do we need settled in our land? Yes, come on. Who is the legitimate president? We know who it is. I tell you, I think we know who it is. I think you know who it is. I tell you, I think you know who it is. And it's going to happen soon, I tell you. Okay, now listen. Now, I want to throw something out for the sake of throwing it out. There's those that now are on the rant of, well, if for some reason, you know, President Trump, which I don't think he needs to announce his candidacy of 2024 personally. There's no law that states that he has to do that. My advice is President Trump, don't do it. Don't give them what they want. Okay, second of all, why do you really need to rerun for something that you already won by a landslide that you never got to fulfill? That's the real issue. Okay, now, 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 hold on. So... So they say, well, you know, if, if President Trump returns in 2024, then all the prophets will say, see, uh, you know, we said that he would have another term. Well, let's, let's hold on a minute. Here's what people don't realize. This is why I pray for Donald Trump constantly. You know why I pray for President Trump constantly? Because let me ask you a question. Has, was there ever a time in history of this world that the law and the prophets and their blood ever, ever was weighing in the balance based on the will of man. Yes. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, fully God, fully man who had a will. But his will was obedient unto the cross and unto death. That's right. So he had a human will. We know it because when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's literally holding the cup of iniquity of us all. And he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. At that moment, every prophecy of the Messiah, all the innocent blood of the prophets that they stoned and thought was false, was hanging in the balance of a human, fully God, fully man, his will. Yes. Would you do what God is asking you to do? You can have every prophetic theology that you want. That's why prophecy is conditional. Human will is involved. God isn't just handing it. He's got to say yes. And what we need to pray about is that he continues to say yes. And if you listen to him, he ain't letting this go. No. And what we need to pray is that God rightfully restores what was stolen. Yes. Praise Amen. 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 Or you will have no voice. And really, what's the purpose of a midterm election or another election in 2024? If a guy won already by proof, watch 2,000 mules and then comment later. There's evidence out there. 
And there's Plenty. more and there's more coming. Plenty. And God said on August 16th of 2020 from the lips of this vessel and this ministry that they were going to steal the election. They were going to delay it through a chaotic plan thing. But God says, you think they're going to steal my nation from me? So God already told on them. That's all I'm saying. The point is, President Trump won by a landslide. Yeah. And, and yet he's not able to fulfill that. That's right. Yeah. So we got to pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. But here's what I believe. I believe we've prayed, and I think we've got to stay in there. But now I believe God is going to act on what we have stood for and prayed. Amen. And we're going to get our country back. Amen. We're going to get our president Amen. back. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. So how many of you see that? Yes. Restore Roe versus Wade? Yes. That happened. Settling of who is the rightful president and who's the illegitimate one. Yep. Over votes. Now we just saw Roe versus Wade. I think we better keep our eyes on the court. Yep. Yes. 